the person I'm going to introduce is the one, the only, the myth, the legend that is Kate Northrup. Kate, everybody, send Kate some love. Kate, thank you and welcome to the Who Wants to Be a Spiritual Millionaire family. Hi, Preston. I'm so happy to be here. You are just a delight. And I love your just purple, green, glow, <laughs> like explosion behind you, the abundance. So yes. good. Let's go. We're similar. You're you're such a, a big energy and so bright as well. Um, more is more. <laughs> exactly. More is more. Let's go. Kate, can you tell people what you do in the world? Yeah. I help people heal their relationship with money through a body first, you know, somatic approach. So yeah. Kate and I, um, and what's beautiful about Kate and I, and we talked about this on the podcast, is We've never met up until recently. We've both been doing our own journey and going through 12 billion different iterations of things to come to the same exact understanding, like exact. And for me, that was confirmation, not competition. It was like, fuck yes, this is somebody else who gets it and really gets it, right? Not just intellectually, this person has lived this stuff. So, Kate, let's start with... Um, how do you see or view money and abundance? So to me, money is a form of abundance. You know, mm -hmm. abundance is the umbrella. And then there's all sorts of ways you can experience it. And money is just one of them. And the way I experience money and abundance are both a feeling in my body, we cannot experience anything without it being experienced in our bodies. So it's always a feeling. It's always a feeling. So abundance is a feeling and money sometimes can bring that feeling, though easier if we know how to feel the feeling regardless of the financial picture. Yes, yes, yes. Um, let me ask you this because drop a, drop a one in the comments. If you have a little bit of debt that you're working with or wanting to understand more about, there we go. Can you help people see how you see debt? Yeah. 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 So I have a phrase that I love to spread around. I don't think that I'm the first person who said it. I think it was Louise Hay, but quite frankly, I can't actually find her having said it anywhere, but I, she's passed on now. So I'm just giving credit to Louise. Um, and so the, the phrase is, I call debt invoices for blessings already received, mm. which immediately changes the feeling. It's like, oh, okay. So I have some, you know, I have an outstanding balance on my American Express. Great. What was on there? Oh, it was that dinner I went to with those friends and we had the story and then I ended up getting this business connection. Oh, it was that course that I took. And actually I'm like a hundred times more resilient and powerful. And now I know how to do Facebook ads or whatever. Like, so to look or our student loans, right? Like we can actually look and itemize and shift our relationship with our debt because our culture has conditioned us that debt is bad mm -hmm. and somehow a reflection of who we are as a human. And debt is just math. All it means is that you receive something in advance. Awesome. And then you just needed to pay for it later. What a freaking blessing, quite frankly, like it, and I think in the United States, we really take it for granted. And certainly there's a shadow of, you know, debt consumer culture. And, we, you know, that's true. And also there are many places in the world where you cannot receive something until you have the cash to purchase it. And while that may be a choice that some people make to never do that, the truth is Invoices for blessings already received can really um, leapfrog us in terms of our business. Like I started my business care of MasterCard. Like yes. I didn't know that you could get capital other ways. And so I leapfrogged. I like used credit card debt as a springboard and I stand by it because I was able to grow faster with that infusion of capital. Yo, 
absolutely beautiful. Thank you for sharing that and saying that. I think it hit a lot of people. Um, let's go deeper into that. So there's a lot of coaches, healers, light workers, therapists, people here who also feel the call, right? There's a part of them that's like, yo, I, I need to be doing this work. If you were to redo it, if you were to redo it, like you've already quote unquote made it, people already see you and know you and understand and your podcast is dope and all the things and our podcast came out today. Watch today. that. Yes. Um, <laughs> but if you were to redo it right now, is there anything you would do differently or anything you would amplify more knowing what you know now? Uh, I mean, like practically speaking, I wouldn't change anything. Mm. In terms of the steps, because yes. there's no way I could have learned what I needed to learn to become who I am. Yep. However, I will say this. I would have given myself permission to have a lot more fun along the way. So same thing, more fun. That part. Huge. <laughs> First of all, everybody just say hi to Alexi real quick. My wife just popped in here. She's bringing me food. Hi. Hi, babe. Hey. Good to see hi. you. You yep. look radiant. So do you. Uh huh. Yeah. Family on the internet, on the interwebs. I shall see you all later. She'll see you later. She'll she'll come in and drop some wisdom too. I'm sure Kate is dropping some. She's killing it. Some bombs here. Yep. So I'll let you drop. All right. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Kate. I mean, when I say that is one of the most important factors. If if that question was asked to me, I would have said the same thing. More fun. More fun. Bigger bigger mistakes. Play harder. Fall harder. Right. Um. What did you do, though, that you absolutely nailed? Mm. Like when you think about the steps and you're like, yo, all of those worked, but that one? It is, it's still my number one thing that I do now. It's why you and I are talking here today. I prioritize relationships above all else. Mm. And that doesn't mean against my well own well-being. Like, I, I don't betray myself for other people, but like... Always, 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 it's the people because like, always, it's the people. It's the people that fill up my heart. It's the relationships that um, always lead to good business, though that's not the reason I do it. It fills up my heart. It fills up my soul, like eye to eye, heart to heart, person to person. When I look back at my life so far, I've still got quite a while, but like so far, it is always like I poured into relationships. I returned the call. I reached out just because I felt like it. Not mm. ever, not ever, not ever, not ever transactionally. So it is always relational, never transactional. And it is like the full trust of when my heart is out there, that is all that matters. That. Man, I, it's so trippy how similar we are. It is li literally, we, we, you're not tall. You're not short either, but you're not tall. I'm not really tall. You're not I tall. Okay, short. Let's, let's just own it, right? You're short. You happen to be in coming a white woman's frame. I happen to come in a Nigerian African frame. And yet, literally, yes, that's one of my biggest principles as well, which is to see family, not dollar signs. When you see family, family looks back at you. Family operates with you. I literally have never heard a single bad thing about you. And this industry is pretty small, right? Everyone who I've ever heard or mentioned your name has mentioned it with, oh, she's dope. She's beautiful. She's like dropped in, right? Is this landing for y'all? Right, the, you're 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 talking to and getting to learn from someone who is a spiritual millionaire, and the two things she said that na she nailed, and and she would do more of is more fun, and prioritizing relationships, proximity, community. Hi, Annie. Yes, my sister's here. <laughs> yes, there you go. And yes, your sister's here, who is also ridiculously awesome and somebody who I 100% love. So, okay, more questions. So. Ooh, that's a good one. This is going to be a good one. This may be a little confrontive. People know that I do this and it may be a little confrontive. Okay. So I'm just prefacing. You don't have to answer either. Um, so a lot of people have trauma when it comes to family and family and money. Um, I had a best friend, I'm just going to preface this, a best friend named Brown, uh, who's still my best friend, Brown Andrews. If you're watching, I love you. 
Brown and I had a unconscious covert contract that said I wouldn't shine too bright and neither would he because we would leave each other behind. And I've known him since I was five years old. I'm 44, known him since I was five. At some point, we both realized that we were holding each other back because of that. And um, I made a decision that I was going to stop like actually hanging, hanging with them, even though we were roommates. We were roommates. And I said, hey, I'm going to I'm going to step out of the party scene. I'm not going to be there with you guys. I'm like, I'm going this way. How have you navigated that with your sister? Mm. What a beautiful question. Mm -hmm. It's a hard question. Mm -hmm. And I will say this. Um, my sister, and this is this is like for everyone to really listen to. Mm -hmm. uh, my sister is somebody that I can share all of my bigness and mm. all of my smallness with. And never once has anything ever happened in my life that was beautiful and celebratory that I have felt her contraction around, jealousy around. Now that's with my sister. And that's so beautiful. That's not mm. the truth with everyone in my family. Mm. Um, so I will just say that. Mm -hmm. And uh, with those where there is contraction or a feeling of like, don't go too big, Mm -hmm. I just don't share everything with them. It's just <laughs> actually just the truth. I just don't. There's just topics I don't talk about with them. They're not the call that I make. And so I actually have a list of people and um, a literal list. Mm -hmm. And these are the people that love me in all my bigness and mm -hmm. all my smallness. And uh, my sister's on there mm -hmm. and uh, other people that I'm blood related to are not and it's Yo, okay let me just start with everybody just because i see tears shivers like everybody's getting breakthroughs for this thank you for answering that right like again um a lot of people we, we can share the like antidotal things but to me and i see it in, in in the work that i do with people a lot of times they have an invisible uh enemy or opponent that they're battling. They don't want to outshine. They don't want their cousins to make fun of them on Facebook, right? So it's it's like twofold, right? I used to, since 13, I've been trying to beat my dad mm -hmm. and show that I'm a better man than him. And yet I also wanted my dad to feel proud of me. And so it's this gas break thing. And I think there's a lot when it comes to siblings and parents and things of that nature. What else have you learned? Even, ooh, this is a good one. Okay, so this is going to trip some people up as well, and they're going to love it. Your husband, what does he do? He runs my company. That part. Our company. That. Speak to that. Because that's not as quote unquote common. And I think that a lot of, especially women need to hear that this is possible. Your husband is a beast. He is so dope and he such is. a beautiful soul. He is. And uh, he is my protector. Mm -hmm. He is my bedrock. He is my foundation. He is the steadiness. I could not do anything I do without him. Mm. Um, and we have been on a journey with this. Um, uh, my husband was sick and injured for many years and was dropped out of life off and on over and over and over again. And I so deeply craved what we have now, which mm. is this feeling of like steady, ever present support. And because of his health, energetically, it was there, but it was not always there logistically and physically. And the work that I did was to find the place that I could plug into that wellspring of security always that was not a specific human being on the planet that I wanted to source it through, which was at the time my husband. And then, of course, as is always the case, 
I did that healing work. I did all the da, 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 da. I plugged in inside. I found a way to feel relaxed and safe, even when all the external was a complete shit show. Uh, just for context, my husband dropped out of life completely two times in three years. And also during that time broke his knee and couldn't walk and was hit by a car. Um, it was, it, and, and also simultaneously, my mom was getting canceled on the internet, like, and you know, everyone was doing the pandemic thing. So it was like a really hard time. And, uh, and yet I was like, what if instead of producing as a way to feel safe, what if as I stopped trying to earn as a way to feel safe, and stop projecting on my husband that he should do all those things and instead just tried something new. And I did. And then as a result, of course, I could be met externally by my husband because I had already met myself in that place. Boom. So oh my God, Kate. Can we just all say, oh my God here? Fucking next level. That. What she just described is some of the most challenging work there is to do in this game. It is so fucking easy to externalize your power and say, it's my husband, it's my wife, it's my cousins, it's my mom. If they made me feel safe, then I would be X. Are you fucking serious right now? I love this on so many levels. And I didn't know it. I didn't know all that part. I just saw the result. And I could feel the, the I mean, I'm a feeler. I can feel the, the energy and the tone of something. And I'm like, this dude really supports her. Yeah. Like, like, go, baby, go. Right? And to, to catch and to understand the underpinnings, right? To, to be so free internally that everything else is, an, is a cherry on top. Hats off. That's beast mode right there. Of course. Here's the piece, right? For, for those of you listening, and I hope this is landing for you, and uh, it's at Kate Northrup, by the way. If you are tagging her, follow her. She's a monster. Just such a beautiful human. Here's what you need to be catching. Because everybody wants to be in the top of the mountain. But are you willing to do what it takes to be there? And what I see you living currently is the willingness to do courageous things, right? The willingness to, to sit in the hard spots and figure it out and keep loving and keep leaning in. Um, I'm so impressed. Like, this is so freaking valuable. We did not know we were going to these two places, but thank you for doing so. Uh, somebody's dropping your Instagram there. Remember, tag her and myself in anything that comes up here. Um, okay, any final thoughts, words that you want people to hear or understand around life, business, money? Yeah. So I think that ultimately when it comes to abundance, whether our currency is money, whether our currency is time, whether our currency is relationships, health, you know, when we can cultivate an experience where we can be in an ever expanding relationship with allowing more and more life force to run through our bodies, that. then all those currencies flow because we are in deeper connection to the one currency, mm. you know, divine spiritual substance, whatever you want to call it. I call it life force. And so if you're ever like feeling like you're running out of time or running out of money or feeling lonely or feeling sick, the question to ask is what would make me come alive right now? Even just a little bit more. Mm. 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 That's it. So good. Everybody follow this woman. Um, I'm going to have her be a guest teacher in the spiritual millionaire Academy. Um, Cause we all get to, learn from her and one of the books we're all going to buy after we buy spiritual millionaire is hers as well uh money the love story um thank you thank Weston. you for being my quote-unquote new friend my new old friend um thank you for your willingness to answer tough questions and to 
do it in such an eloquent and beautiful way that it blessed so many people here. Um, this whole process has been really deep and valuable and you just added so much to the space. So grateful. What an honor. I'm so excited. I'm going to order your book right now. I can't Thank wait you. to read it. I love, I love you. you. I Blessings. It. Blessings, yes. everyone. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes.